Thank you very much for that kind in invitation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Drodzy Państwo. Um, I'm very pleased to be in Ireland again. Uh, but speaking about Poland in Ireland is unusual for me. Um, uh, I uh, see that uh, this is the last item on the program. History usually comes at the beginning, uh, how something happens and then other people take over. In, in this case, history is coming last. <coughs> at least I hope that I will stop in time to uh, uh, give you the space for, for questions. Um, I'm very pleased to see that the event is spent, uh, co-sponsored by the Institute of History in Krakow. Uh, I believe that I am technically still a professor of the university, the Jagiellonian University. Um, I'm uh, officially not retired. I was given what was politely called uh, eternal leave. Um, but I, I'm very frequently in, in Krakow uh, with my wife and I will be uh, lecturing there again soon. I have to say I was very pleased to arrive in time for the uh, recital. Uh, it's very difficult for uh, historians or anyone to uh, reconstruct uh, the climate, the atmosphere, the feeling of events in the past, even it's, if it's only 30 years ago. Uh, I realized recently that most young people, which means probably most people in this hall, can't remember what happened 30 years ago. Uh, solidarity is like, I don't know, Napoleon or Julius Caesar, something that happened before our time. Uh, and reconstructing the past requires much more than skillful words or uh, extensive lectures. Um, the songs of 1980, as we heard uh, a few minutes ago, this uh, inimitable mixture of protest songs and patriotic hymns is something I remember uh, very strongly indeed, and I was very moved to uh, hear those uh, songs again, sung with great gusto. Uh, I was asked to talk about the, the roots of solidarity, and uh, that is a very, very long story. Uh, most of the things that happen in Poland have very deep roots. Uh, it's a country like Ireland with very long traditions and it's always difficult to know where to start. So I shall start with a subject, uh, the insurrectionary tradition, which goes back many centuries. Uh, goes back in fact to the time when uh, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in the 16th, 17th centuries was briefly the largest state in the whole of Europe. Uh, most people have forgotten those things. Uh, but Poland has had this experience of going from greatness to destruction and uh, revival, renaissance, and an afterlife uh, in the uh, late uh, 20th century, which was very hard to envisage when I started lecturing about Polish things uh, 30 and 40 years ago. But the insurrectionary tra uh, tradition, something which, of course, Poland shares with, with Ireland, the tradition of risings against authority, 
is extremely deeply rooted. Even when the Polish state was thriving, was enormous, um, the noble citizens of that state established the right of resistance, a legal right to rebel against the state, against the king, under arms. Uh, and uh, this established a way of political thinking which was, again to use an Irish expression, very again, uh, against authority, um, independence from the, uh, the powers that be. Uh, and in the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, there were repeated uh, confederations, r risings against authority, where citizens, right, rightly or wrongly, believed that the political authorities had broken the law. Now, this tradition had a great uh, future when the Polish state was destroyed in the partitions at the end of the 18th century. It meant that uh, in the 19th century, when Poland disappeared from the map, the uh, political, politically conscious classes uh, revived this old idea of resisting the state if necessary by armed means. And I think it's true to say that every single generation of, uh, of Poles from the 18th century right until the last great rising in 1944, the, the Warsaw Rising, uh, took up arms against uh, their foreign uh, oppressors. Uh, again, something our Irish friends will recognize uh, very much. A long-standing um, uh, history of resistance to authority and of uh, rebellion. Now, during World War II, the oppressions which uh, Poland uh, suffered were far more extreme than anything that they'd met before. Uh, far more extreme, I think, than any other uh, country had met before. The losses in, among the population of, of Poland in 1939 to 45 were proportionately greater than those of any other combatant state at the time. Um, and a great deal of all the, the most horrible atrocities, <coughs> including the Jewish co uh, Holocaust, took place on the uh, lands of pre-war Poland. I hope you agree. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Polish tradition of resistance. <laughs> uh, and the, the war uh, in uh, Poland ended uh, not only with defeat. Poland was one of the few allied countries uh, which in effect was uh, defeated, defeated by another ally, not by the enemy, uh, but the, uh, the war uh, in the center of Poland, in Warsaw, ended with a, a grand rising, a uh, tragic rising, uh, which ended with the entire city destroyed, 90% uh, of the buildings um, burnt and uh, reduced to ruins, and the <clears throat> entire uh, population evacuated. Uh, the Polish losses 
uh, of civilians were so enormous um, that it took decades for Poland to recover. I remember these times very well. <laughs> uh, our little boy used to run round and round the church with me, following him in desperation. Um, but w I don't uh, want to give you a lecture about World War II in Poland, but uh, things were so atrocious. The, uh, the death toll, nearly 20% of the, the entire population, the hundreds of thousands of people killed in, in Warsaw alone, uh, greatly affected uh, people's attitude to this tradition of insurrection. Uh, there'd always been Poles who criticized the rising. Um, uh, this is very natural. A large nation, 40 million people. There's no way that in anything they... Um, they could agree on, on things, and at every rising there were people for and people against. Uh, but after the, the horrors of the Second World War, the opposition to armed rising uh, was, uh, was much increased, uh, and I think there was a widespread awareness that if it came to conflict in the future, some other new means must be found. And this was certainly the case <coughs> uh, of <coughs> the case of solidarity uh, in 1980, which was uh, the next rising in the series uh, after you know, 1830, 1863, 1905, 1944, 1980, it was certainly a, one of the series of risings, but it took very different form from what had happened before, uh, in particular to the uh, doctrine of non-violence, which I, I shall mention in a minute. The latest of Poland's foreign oppressors, uh, after the Second World War was the Soviet Union of Joseph Stalin. Um, we tend to, we, I'm thinking of the British, tend to think of the Second World War as a simple conflict between one good side and one bad side, in which uh, the good side prevailed. 